Now, Jesse Waters, <clears throat> he's very upset. Uh, always, as a general character uh, element. Uh, even his even his smile is frowning. And he's this is the five, uh, which is really, from Fox's point of view, the four and an outlier. Um, who, by the way, you ever notice how the liberal that they always put on there trounces everybody else, even though they're outnumbered? Yeah, it's weird that way. Anyways, he goes... He's talking about the Shokin interview that Kill Me did. Maybe they'll play clips. We'll see. I have not pre-watched this. You're watching it with me. That's how we do shit here. It's South Park's Mega Worldwide. Let's do this. Love if you just forgot about the time when he flexed Biden would love if you just his muscle as Obama's vice president and got a Ukrainian prosecutor fired. The same one who was looking into the Ukrainian energy company Burisma, his son Hunter, was on the board of. I'm leaving in six hours. Yes, he wants you to forget the fact that in 2018... Two years after he was out of office, he was bra still bragging about it. This was one of his choice brags. Yeah, the I don't know why the videos keep getting quiet. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a <laughs> <laughs> got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid at the time. Yeah. That, you know, it's always funny when, when the Fox folks leave that part on. And they put somebody in who was solid. Right. But that SOB that Biden got fired isn't going to be silent. Former uh-huh. He's, he's got his dream interview with Brian Kilmeade. Yeah. It's, it's like, uh, he's, he's, if Barbara Walters was Carl in Sling Blade. For Ukrainian prosecutor Victor Shokin spilling the beans to Brian Kilmeade in an exclusive interview. Shokin believes Joe Biden and his he what? Sorry, what's that word again? Now, this is the guy who was there, right? Tell me again. He what? Beans to Brian Kilmeade in an exclusive interview. Shokin believes Joe Biden... He's it was you who? Spilling the beans to Brian Kilmeade in an exclusive interview. Shokin believes Joe Biden... Oh, he believes. That's all I really need from a prosecutor. I don't know about you. <laughs> Your Honor, uh, we, uh, Exhibit A is my belief that the client... That, that the... Uh, that the defendant is a complete shit heel. Yep. I just feel it in my heart, Your Honor. Um, if you'd like to cross-examine my beliefs, I can... I mean, I really believe... It, I mean, look at him. I mean, what more do you need? <laughs> a smoking gun or something? Like that? I mean, come on. Look at the fucking guy. Look at him. Serious, right? <laughs> and his son, Hunter, took bribes. I do not want to deal in unproven facts. I do not want to deal in unproven facts. Well, uh, you're, you're in luck because there's no such thing as an unproven fact. If something is unproven, then it is not indeed a fact. But my firm personal conviction... Is but my firm personal conviction, as someone who was fired for corruption... Is that, yes, this was the case. They were being bribed. The fact that... Joe Biden gave away $1 billion in uh, U.S. Uh, money in exchange for my dismissal, my firing. Isn't that alone a case of corruption? No. No, it's a reaction to corruption, fuckwad. <laughs> that it, the point was, you're so fucking corrupt, I'm not going to give you the keys to my house. You can't stay over if you're bringing that guy. That's it. I told you you could stay at my house over the weekend while you're, because your house was flooded out. That's cool. But not that guy. Because the last time, because that motherfucker keeps setting fire to every house he stays in. No. That, that's it. The recognition of, like, Jesus Christ. That's like saying undercover cops uh, are the linchpin of the drug trade because they pretend to do what I do for a living. <sighs> The White House claiming Shokin's lying, but you can be the judge of that. I, I am the judge of it. And by the way, I, I don't care what he's, whether he's lying or not. I don't give a fuck. I don't think he's lying. You're, you're, uh, excuse me for one second. I mean, clarify. I don't think he's lying. I mean, I think he's full of shit, but I have no measurable way of knowing whether he's lying, nor does he. He says it's his firmly held belief. And... 
He was the fucking prosecutor. If it was his firmly held belief and he was fired by it and he still, after all these fucking years, doesn't have a printout from one of his buddies at the precinct? What? All right. Kill Mead's must-see interview is airing tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern on One Nation. Oh, they used, they, they, they used an older picture of him. That's, that's gentleman. Nation. And is the liberal media starting to see the light on Biden family corruption? The Atlantic putting out this article, which admits that it now seems quite likely that Hunter Biden broke some laws. Violated, violated one or more U.S. laws. Okay, well, I, I guess, kids, we've got to jump in. I'm excited. Okay, let's see here. Uh, is And is that the... Uh, not illegal, but wrong. Okay. Uh, clearly wrong. Oh, oh, and by the way, um, this, this is my last free article. Um, but, uh, here, I'll bring this over here. I'm going to stretch this guy out so I can show this to you. And we'll just drag it down here. Uh, da -da. Okay. Um, um, hold on one second. Um, not illegal, but clearly wrong. They took, uh, I was interesting. They took the clearly out. Um, because I guess clearly <clears throat> softens it a little to it. They just want wrong, right? Yeah. The biggest problem with Hunter Biden's access peddling business may have been that his father, uh, the president thought it was fine. Says Sarah Chase. Um, Decision to convert the federal government, let's see. Um, Joe Biden insisted my son's done nothing wrong, but is that true? It now seems quite likely that Hunter Biden has violated one or more U.S. laws. But that's not all the wrong he's done. There's a difference between what is technically illegal and what is wrong. I agree. Um, but some context may help explain the chasm that has opened up between the two. The gulf between most and more ordinary Americans is corruption. Okay, and since 97, May of this year, series of Supreme Court cases, uh, 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 the court has whittled down what was once our right to the honest services of our public services to rule out long the only the trade of official acts or to, okay I see so they've lowered the standard for what bribery uh, or raise the standard for what qualifies as bribery <clears throat> almost as stunning as the fact well you have uh, Reagan to thank for that um, in a lot of ways Ruth Bader Ginsburg wrote in 2010 opinion in the case of Enron uh, Jeffrey Schill uh, Skilling that limited the honest services law which also applied to business executives as well as governor to bribery and kickback schemes only. Um, Thanks to that part of the court, I see. So, uh, I mean, what part of this protects Donald Trump? Let's start there. Let's start with the bare fact of Burisma, the Ukrainian energy company that put Archer and Hunter on his board of directors. It did so in the spring of 2014, shortly after the Maidan revolution toppled the government of Viktor Yanukovych, a man whose corruption had been uh, had to be seen to be believed. Uh, Burisma's owner was Mikhail Zhevsky, who, was, who had been Yanukovych's minister for natural resources. Zhevsky had been a target of investigations by the pro top prosecutors since 2012 for suspected money laundering, self-dealing, and Burisma. So the, he started the... This is a good point. Ha Zlovchevsky had been the target of, Zlov uh, of uh, Ukraine's top prosecutor since 2012. We'll open this a link in a new tab. Um, for suspected money laundering self-dealing at Burisma some months after the ouster of his former boss, Lovchevsky, fled Ukraine. Um, blink. Ukrainian authorities have effectively suspended their investigation because they're unable to determine his whereabouts. Uh, yeah, and again, where, when, when's, the, when's the moment where this guy feels like he's in a tight spot and he wants to release? He's, he's just gone. What do we assume? Is this the Biden... Body count. We're going to start with that. They're going to start. I mean, the Clintons had one, right? All right. I've studied how corruption works in fossil fuel rich countries of this ilk and have repeatedly noticed the role of energy and natural resources ministers, petroleum minister in Nigeria. When I was working there, for example, has been implicated and found liable in multiple bribery screams in 2013. The country's central bank governor provided uh, evidence to the Senate that close to a billion dollars a month in oil revenues had disappeared. Uh, other characters alongside the Ukrainian oil ministry. Uh, yes, we know this. Uh, This person is playing ducks and drakes with the whole uh, Elena Batarina, who gave money, by the way, to um, Devin Archer, not her. She was married to a former mayor of Moscow named Yuri Luskov, uh, whom the U.S. ambassador to Russia described as, in 2010 as sitting on top of a pyramid of corruption and criminal behavior. Um, also in this circle, per Archer's testimony, was his good friend Karim Mazimov. 
uh, it, let's see, intelligence chief and prime minister under Kazakhstan intelligence, Natsalan Nazarbayev, uh, investigated by those suspected bribery, blah, blah, blah. Yes, we know this. Archer's description of associates' uh, activities illustrate what I found to be the typical modus operandi for such networks. Okay, so, but Archer is to be trusted. Hunter is not. I see. His own corporate holdings, uh, Hunter had a stake, were subdivided, blah, blah, blah. According to Archer's testimony, Mazamov and Batarino were among the people present at one of the dinners to which Hunter Biden invited his fathers at other gatherings. That was uh, later? Yeah, okay. In which he invited his father at other gatherings, Hunter would put his dad on speakerphone. Nothing substantive was discussed. Archer testified, but that's not the point. Yes, it is the point. It is, it is solely the point. You cannot stop someone else for selling access to you. You can only not give it. And unless you can show that he gave it, it, basically, Hunter was just using his last name, you know, as a skate or as a backstop to protect himself. Don't fuck with me. This is who my dad is, essentially. Um, and that's Archer's testimony. We saw that. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Anyways, um, I, I don't know who Sarah Ch Chase is. We do know that. Uh, look out, corruption ahead. As the country mobilizes resources to uh, address the pandemic, politicians and corporations may attempt to exploit the crisis to enrich themselves. This is how kleptocracies work. Hunter Biden's perfectly legal, socially acceptable corruption. She wrote this in 2019. Uh, Trump's pardons were shocking to some, but to me, they were eerily familiar. Straight out of the kleptocratic playbook I've studied in a dozen other countries. Preparing for the collapse of the Saudi kingdom. It can't last. The U.S. better get ready. This is 2016. All right, we'll see. It's, uh, you know, from your mouth to God's ears, but we'll see. Okay, so anyways, that was the primary one. She's not listing which ones. Obviously, she means tax laws, but whatever. Are you going to be watching at 8 o'clock Eastern One Nation, Jessica? Absolutely. I think that everyone should. I think it's really important to, to hear from all sides on these kinds of things. Call I will to the committees who are <laughs> That's not right. answering any questions. Sorry, what? I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, I, I, I don't get what that's a reference to, but... Um, Victor Shokin, though, is <laughs> basically it's like, bitch, right? You know, that's essentially not the most reliable narrator for such an event. And he's not under oath. He's just doing an interview and he should go and testify before committees under oath if he has a real story to tell there. But all of the evidence refutes what we saw in that um, little preview of the interview. Biden fired Victor Shokin with the support of the entire European Union, the International Monetary Fund, the Ukraine. Oh, Greg's not even, Gutfeld's not showing up for this one. He must be, must be sick. I don't know. It must be exhausting coming up with all those um, jokes without punchlines. I. Ukrainian Parliament all voted to kick him out because the guy wasn't doing his job. He wasn't investigating corruption. You know who that wasn't is into firing him though? The Biden, I mean the Obama administration. The that Obama was, administration said, yeah, they were so corrupt, we actually, can keep them there. That's not true. Sure and it, it was is. Joe Biden's it is purview. True. It is okay. true. Victor Shokin's deputy, a guy named Vitaly oh, Casco, yeah. has even confirmed that he wasn't investigating. Burisma, yes, Marie Yovanovitch, our own U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, George Kent, all oh. confirmed it. If you think that the entirety of the international community... I thought about, like, Jesse's just trying to jab in this and is failing miserably. I mean, honestly. Nice work. He cares enough about Hunter Biden's $50,000 a month to keep someone okay. in an office. Why would Joe Biden want him gone then? Because he wasn't doing his job. Because oh, why doesn't okay. Joe he Biden was, care about other just, prosecutors? Why does he care about, about this why, one guy yeah. on who's co his son's company? Why would he want him gone, Jessica? Why he would want, want him gone because he was hired to investigate corruption and he was not doing so. So he wanted to investigate. He did, actually, and that's, I thank you for getting, what a great segue. So when Devin Archer testified before the Oversight Committee, that's exactly what he said. He was being asked about this, Victor Shokin's role. He told them that he was, quote, good for Burisma. And then he agreed with the statement that Shokin didn't pursue corruption investigations against Burisma's owner. You should watch it. It's the exchange. Okay, with that's Dan. not yeah. true. Yes, it is true. That's Read the transcript. True. It's literally a quote from his testimony. That's not true. That isn't. I, you have to understand, I said a thing uh, based on what I think I thought I heard uh, and wanted to hear and while avoiding anything I didn't want to hear. And uh, 
Yeah. Right. Dan Goldman was right. the one that That's was asking true. questions. Victoria Newland, who was the State Department's top point person on Ukraine, Okay, I know she is, yeah. said that Shokin was doing a good job fighting crime. No, she didn't. We watched that chunk of interview. Judge, now understand, and I get it. What in the hell would Janine Pirro know about facts or evidence? She only calls herself a judge still, right? She makes fun of Dr. Joe Biden, but still calls herself a, a judge. Oh, boy. Um, the, um, you know what? Fuck it. I'm Colonel Hal Sparks from now on. Just get used to the idea. I'm a colonel. I'm a Kentucky colonel. I've been designated by the state of Kentucky as a colonel. End of fucking story. Real title. Uh, hold on. Fuck off. <laughs> I am a colonel. I'm a Kentucky colonel. That's right. See that? And I, there you go. This says, Polly Patton, to all, uh, to all to whom these presents shall come, greetings, know ye that honorable House Parks is commissioned a Kentucky colonel. I hereby confer this honor with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Polly Patton and John Y. Brown III. Uh, 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 just saying. I'm a fucking colonel. Eat that, judge. And, and uh, granted, uh, I would defer to any members of our military, uh, based on their rank, out of respect. But if I am sitting on a porch some way, uh, somewhere, somewhere in the south, and it's, you hear crickets and this... Lightning bugs floating around, and I've got a straw in my mouth, and I'm sitting in a rocking chair. Um, it is totally fine to go, evening, Colonel, and I will respond <laughs> in kind. You're goddamn right I'm a Colonel. So, uh, if, if I'm ever on this fucking show, I'm going to I'm gonna insist that Judge refer to me as Colonel. John Kerry... Uh, was saying the same thing that Shokin specifically was doing a good job fighting corruption. All of, and this is in... By the way, no, they weren't. Um, back to what we were talking about when she went on this. They said the government was doing a good job. In general. One of the... There, there were obviously some areas they needed to work on, like Shokin, for example. Uh, June of 2015. All of a sudden, in January of 2016, Shokin is corrupt, and Joe Biden says he's got to go. Now, the fact is that the Obama de uh, State Department was in favor of Shokin because everybody knew there was corruption going on in Ukraine. That's why Shokin was hired. Boroshenko put him in there to make sure that he... Uh, Boris Shenko is not a person. Uh, Poroshenko is the last name of the guy who was the president at the time. He prosecuted corruption. And when he got too close to Burisma that they wanted to bring to the United States to do business, that's when they said, Joe... Wait, if they bring it, if Burisma comes to the United States, the SEC would oversee all of the aspects of it. It would have more fucking scrutiny, you dim bulb. Oh, you got to come in here and save this country, this company, or your son. In I'm not finished. He wasn't. In 20, well, in 20, 20, what did you say? You said I wasn't finished. And I said, well, you cut me off. And now go ahead and finish. And then I'll reply. <laughs> All right. In 2016, all of a sudden, uh, the, the prosecutor, who's so wonderful to the State Department, everyone's so grateful he's there, all of a sudden, now that Hunter Biden just gets on the board, everybody's like, he's got to go. And if you're dangling a billion dollars, don't you think that billion might be able to force the prosecutor to investigate Burisma? <laughs> Why do you need all No, because that's not the first fucking time, dumb, dumb. It, they, they, we've given them multiple loan guarantees. As a matter of fact, let's jump into that, shall we? Give me one second. Uh, let's see. Um, history of U.S. and court. Ukraine. Uh, history, 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 history. 
U.S. assistance. U.S. government assistance to Ukraine to support development of German crisis, but a bilateral relationship fact sheet here. Um, Charles de Fail. U.S. relationship, Ukraine relations, U.S. assistance. I don't know, let's see. Uh, Ace country assistance fact sheet. Let's see if we can find this guy. Um, it says USAID assistance to Ukraine by account. Um, health assistance. There we go. Independent media. Uh, let's see. Civil society, law enforcement, anti corruption, anti corruption. Uh, a cross cutting topic is addressed through a democracy and governance. Over the, um, over the last year, the U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, helped Ukraine's government further improve Pro Zoro. Uh, it's mandatory electronic public procurement system, which saved the government an estimated 1.5 billion in 2020 alone and helped the Ukraine. Okay, so uh, let me look up that thing real quick. Hold on, if I may. Uh, Prozoro. Zoro. There we go. Now, let's see if I. Is there an English version of this? Son of a dog doodle. Yeah, there it is. It automatically. Okay, so. All the function of the online portal, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the online public access procurement uh, tenders in Ukraine. Here you go. So um, this was, uh, let's see, the his let me try to find the history of it. Uh, Prozoro is a fully online public procurement platform and collaboration environment that ensures open access to public procurement tenders, meaning money given, in Ukraine, fully implementing in, uh, implemented in 2016. As a hybrid, both centralized public and decentralized private marketplace system that has been in place, uh, been globally organized as one of the most innovative public procurement systems delivering government services in a stakeholder-focused, transparent, effective, fair, and low-cost way. Public purchasing accounts for the sizable part of Ukraine's GDP annually, about UAH, about $600 billion, approximately Euro $20 billion worth of goods and services are transacted with the help of tenders. It is estimated that Prozoro may be responsible for up to 10% of the overall to public spending savings due to increased comp competition and better transparency. Um, about, there it is. Um, let's see. According to the law on public, uh, purchasing of Ukraine, the web portal is the official open data source that offers free access to all public purchasing data on all tenders announced from July 31st, 2016 in Ukrainian language with tender announcements over specific expected value published in English also. Okay. So a big portion of the U S aid, if I may, let me show you this right here. Big, uh, portion of U S aid went to creating and maintaining this system, which is that when government money is spent on government activities or foreign money that is invested in Ukraine is spent, it goes through this system. This system that was set up in 2016. 2016, the year of Prozoro. History of Prozoro. Let's go to it. Look at this. How a dream became a reality. Uh, recommended. Uh, these are other books. So, oh, that's a book on here. Okay, so hold on. Uh, this, is the, the, this is the book itself. There we go. Our philosophy, our manifesto, Prozoro, goals near the future. Uh, people are not used to controlling spending of public funds in Ukraine. Until recently, it was believed that the state budget is the abstract money of the country that is distributed by a number of officials in their own way. In Ukraine, only experts were interested in the way public procurement is carried out and why this area is particularly vulnerable to corruption. There it is. So 60 billion Ukrainian uh, dollars a day, conservative estimate of the corruption tax, 10% goes out there. Losses because of lack of competition, another 10%. So people are getting sweetheart deals. So 20% of the money that, you, that is in their entire budget. So, so Biden is facing the fact that we've given them multiple billion dollars. We're doing it on the regular, especially since 2014. We're giving them these loan guarantees. And I think, well, let's see. I don't know how many. We'll find that in a second. But every billion dollars that we give to Ukraine, 20% is going out the fucking door. 20%. The American people <clears throat> are paying it. And, and this affects whether the loan guarantees are used or gets paid back. You know, or the loans themselves get paid back. Um, so that everybody can see everything. Look at this. In the electronic po public procure procurement system, everyone can see everything. Uh, we work in the Golden Triangle partnership, partnership. There's their manifesto. So that's our money that goes into Ukraine. 
goes through that. Fascinating, wouldn't you say? And that was put together by, you know, in partnership with the Obama administration and went online in 2016, probably out of being negotiated and built up over, I don't know, 2014, 2015. So why the fuck would you want more corruption if you were setting up a system like that where everything is in the fucking open? Prozoro. <laughs> Uh, how many billions went to Ukraine during Obama Biden? Something like that. Uh, let's see. CFR is 2023. How much aid is it sent? Okay. Da, da, da. Um, this is just over the, this is for the war, right? Um, let's see. Three days of U.S. security assistance, Ukraine. I want something longer. I need something with, with the history of it. Um, let's see here. Yeah, the problem is it's, uh, there you go, Malfeas, number the Google Books review, the in his own words, video, because I described it. Okay, this is, <laughs> okay, that's one of their books about it. Uh, And here we go. Yeah, I'm I'm looking something up. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll find something. Fear not. Um, I need to find uh, like the. Let's see. I need new. All right, I I, get, I keep getting new links, and I need old. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, you, here you go. U.S. Uh, assistance Ukraine since February 2014. Okay, there you go. Um, well, this is, uh, this, here you go. This is from June 15th, 2016. This, uh, this should uh, help us out a little bit. What do you think? Here we go. Fact sheet. U.S. assistance to Ukraine since February 2014. This is from the Office of the Press Secretary in the White House, June 15th, 2016. Um, I don't remember who was president then, but I know it wasn't Trump. Okay. During his meeting with Ukrainian Prime Minister Volodymyr Groisman, Vice President Joe Biden announced today in Washington that, uh, that pending congressional notification, the White House plans to commit $220 million in new assistance to Ukraine this year in support of economic, political, and energy reforms. This assistance package will continue our support for Ukraine's efforts to strengthen democratic institutions, the rule of law, reinforce the foundations of sustainable economic growth, and respond to humanitarian needs. The new assistance will also support other key areas of the Prime Minister Groisman's ambitious reform agenda, including accelerating customs reform, fighting corruption, um, let's see, through support for key justice sector reforms, including implementation of the constitu constitutional amendments adopted by the RADA on June 2nd, and Prosecutor General Yuri Lutsenko, that's the guy who uh, replaced him reform agenda. And by expanding our partnerships with national anti-corruption bureau, specialized anti-corruption prosecutor's office and national police, as well as support for independent media and civil society, um, extending decentralization across Ukraine, helping to improve service delivery, increase citizen engagement and oversight, raise public awareness of the benefits of reforms, expanding support for energy security. Okay. In addition, uh, on June 9th, the overseas private investment corporation, OPIC, if I had any more of that diesel fuel, I'd have to join that APEC, OPEC. Approved up to 62.5 million in financial support to two private equity funds that will invest in Ukraine across a number of sectors, including agribusiness, healthcare, infrastructure, retail, consumer goods, and real estate. These two investments are in addition to OPEC, OPEC. It's total exposure in Ukraine to uh, of 185 million, including 73 million in insurance coverage, 97 million in finance, and right, okay. United States is also helping Ukraine improve its business environment to attract more foreign investment through implementation of banking reforms, simplified regulations, enhanced investor rights, and greater transparency. Why the fuck would you even shoot for these goals? I guess maybe if, it, whatever. All right, the United States will continue to work closely with the Ukrainian government to help ensure the practical experience the U.S. industry has taken into account. These initiatives now uh, and new commitments are worth part of a $1.3 billion in foreign assistance the U.S. government has committed to Ukraine since 2014 to advance reforms, strengthen democratic institutions, civil society, stimulate economic growth, strengthen its defenses, and help Ukraine more safely monitor and secure its borders and defend its territorial integrity. 
Um, U.S. government also provided Ukraine $2 billion in loan guarantees. So the, the second one was the one he held up, I guess, and signed an agreement on June 3rd to allow for the issuance of a third up to $1 billion. Uh, oh, maybe that was the last one. So they'd already done two. There was three um, of a third up to $1 billion loan guarantee in the coming months pending completion of certain conditions and congressional notification process. These loan guarantees help Ukraine stabilize its economy and protect the most vulnerable households. Motherfucker, it says it. Certain conditions. Who thinks? Call him. Who thinks that fucking... Well, I mean, it's just so, if I may. Bink, 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 bink. Let's bring this uh, up so you guys can read this. and make this... T- there it goes. There you go. <sighs> Issuance of a third up to $1 billion loan guarantee in the coming months pending completion of certain conditions and the congressional notification process. Does anybody else bother to do... Am I the only one that did the reading? To quote Iron Man? All right. A whole new prosecutor. Why couldn't you just tell him to investigate this company? And Jessica, your pushback when it comes to Shokin and Burisma in particular seems to be a firewall set up to make sure this doesn't come back to Joe Biden. Clearly, as Jesse pointed out in the introduction, there seems to be a growing realization across the media landscape that Hunter was up to ugly business, not just in Ukraine, in China and everywhere yeah. else, that Air Force Two served, as Jesse has reported on throughout this week, as essentially a taxi service for Hunter Biden's businesses. And it takes a imaginary leap, a huge creative leap to think that Joe Biden was at least ignorant, if not involved, in all of the ongoings with this taxi service. Sure, I'll take you to Serbia. Sure, I'll take you to Spain. Sure, I'll take you to China. Sure, I'll take you to Canada. What are you doing when you get there, son? I don't know, Dad. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I have never said that I don't think that Hunter could be guilty of wrongdoing. What I have said consistently, and people have been pushing various members of these committees on this, and Sandra, you've done it on your own show. I had Jason, where, so if I could, the, where are the so payments? Jason Smith, the chairman of the House Ways and Means, was on our program today. Where are the payments? And <laughs> 20. Yes, where are the million payments? million dollars they no, already but, found. But, but, so why not? But why not? Why wouldn't the president, if there's no wrongdoing, why not encourage Congress to turn over any information that they had? Jason Smith made the point on our show today, and I read verbatim. We have been stonewalled. He said, this is a pattern we are seeing over and over. Yeah, but that's a lie. I mean, materially, they have 23 years of Joe Biden's tax returns. Crack them the fuck open. Check if there was an audit or there needed to be one. 23 fucking years. They are stalling any revelations that they can possibly provide to the committee in regards to how the Justice Department blocked the prosecution of the president's son. When you've lost the Atlantic, to your point, the headline in the Atlantic, it now seems quite likely that Hunter Biden broke laws. They're saying as tenderly as a father may love his struggling son, the president can do better than parrot the nothing wrong chorus. At what point are they going to say, you know what, we've got to start talking. We've got to encourage providing answers to these questions. I Hunter Biden breaking laws and Joe Biden breaking laws are very different. No one cares about Hunter Biden. They don't. He's an accessory, Jessica. He's He's an accessory, Jessica. Okay. He's the bag man. Didn't you listen? I watched all of Rudy's shows almost all the way through. And he's an accessory. Yes. Tell us about how he's the bag man who complained about having to give money to the person he was allegedly carrying the bag for. taking him all over the world and all of his entire family's okay. getting there. Well, I look forward benefits. to his mugshot My. then. Hope that it's stern. Okay. Well, we'll find out. That two he's a very handsome man. Exists. He is a handsome Hey, Sean Hannity here. <laughs> that's, that's where they dived out of this fucking clip. I'd like to say just for the record that these people are arguing, uh, arguing about Shokin's beliefs and the, and the, the Congress saying they're stonewalling us about Biden's finances when they literally have access to all of them. I, honest to God, I think at best, they're insisting that the White House do something to have the president hand over his son's financial work without his son having his own due process. He's a grown man, not a member of the U.S. government. And if they want to, again, 
let's go after Jared and, and Ivanka who worked in the White House every fucking day, not somebody who visits on fucking Easter. Um, and, and the idea that he was, you know, he traveled overseas and while he was there, he was glad handing and he ended up selling it, you know, th then that's cool. Make that case, but show me where the money went. 